functionalism and the first two issues of fake by Immodor. Throughout this video, as I speak, writing will appear on the screen or pictures just to help the video go along. Before we get into the issues of functionalism, let's do a recap on it. Functionists believe that mental states are best understood as being functional entities, like can openers. Not only this, but functionalists would also say that the defining feature of any mental state is the causal relations it bears to. Soon I will draw a flow diagram explaining just this. Now let's draw the flow diagram. Say if we had the environmental effect, i.e. a bee stings me. This would create the mental state of pain. It would also create the behaviour to scream and cry. These curvy arrows represent causal relations. The mental state wouldn't just create the behaviour to scream and cry. It would also create the mental state of fear which I'm drawing right now. The mental state of fear would consequently create the behaviour to run away. And this concludes the flow diagram. Moving on. Before we delve into the issues of functionalism, this is the last recap we are going to do. It is important to realise, because it is the function that defines a mental state and not the material. This therefore means that multiple people can have the same process going on. This is otherwise known as multiple realizability of mental states, which is in big writing in the middle of the screen. The last bit of functionalism that we're going to recap is that it claims for something to have functional states it must have a complex internal organisation, which I'm just writing on the screen now. This concludes the quick recap. Now we are going to move on to the first two issues of functionalism. Firstly, the possibility of a functional duplicate with different qualia. This is also known as inverted qualia. And secondly, the knowledge Mary argument, which can be applied to functional facts. I will explain inverted qualia with a diagram. Suppose that you and I are looking at ripe tomatoes and fresh grass. Because we have grown up in the same linguistic community, we have learned to use the word red to describe the tomatoes and green to describe the grass. So we both say that the tomatoes are red, the grass is green. But the particular way that tomatoes seem to me is the way that grass looks to you, and vice versa. This means, functionally, we are identical, yet we have different colour experiences. I, inside my mind, green and red feels like something very different to how it does in the other person. Overall, the objection is that inverted qualia are possible. If functionalism were true, inverted qualia would be impossible. So functionalism is false. There is a response to this issue put forward by a lady whom I'll be drawing on the screen. By the end of the explanation, you'll find out who I was drawing. The functionalist can reply that in the case described, you and I are not, in fact, functionally identical. There are going to be small but very important differences because the causal relations of phenomenal properties are very complex. In Brainwise, the lady I'm drawing argues that we have no good reason to think that qualia can be inverted in the way the thought experiment describes. She starts by making the objection from inverted qualia clearer. The main claim in the objection is that you and I, or our brain, could function in exactly the same way but we would have different qualities. She points out that this is not being proposed 
as an empirical hypothesis, for example, that you and I really do see red and green differently. Why not? Because empirical hypotheses are tested against the evidence. First, we have no evidence from neuroscience that identical brain functioning gives rise to different conscious experiences. Second, as an empirical hypothesis, it is poor, since it proposes that there could be empirical differences that are undetectable since they make no functional difference. But science does not proceed by supposing undetectable facts, so the inverted qualia objection is bad science. She then points out that the thought experiment is much too simple. First, every colour that we can discriminate has unique similarity and dissimilarity relations to all surrounding colours. For instance, red is more similar to orange than green is, while green is more similar to blue than red is, so we can't simply switch red and green without messing this up. If you and I saw red and green switched, then we wouldn't agree on whether red was more similar to orange or blue, and this is a functional difference. One response would be to change the thought experiment. It is not just red and green that are inverted, but the whole spectrum. This could keep all the similarity relations as well. Someone who sees red as green also sees orange as blue, and so they say that red is similar to orange, but what they see is what I see when I look at green and blue. But this meets another problem. Human beings can make much finer discriminations in green, yellow and orange than we can in blue. If we inverted everything, this would be apparent from behaviour, as whoever sees the inverted colours would be able to make finer discriminations among the blue than the rest of us can, and fewer discriminations in green, yellow and orange. And so it is empirically impossible for someone to have inverted qualia without functional differences. Lastly, the qualia theorist argues that phenomenal properties are intrinsic. They are essentially what it is like to experience them. In other words, it is conscious introspection that identifies whether two colours are the same or not. But is this right? We can offer an explanation of our experience of colour in terms of our physical makeup and how our bodies function. For example, why does colour have the three dimensions of red, green and blue? The answer has to do with types of colour sensitive cells, cones in our retinas and the way they are wired up to the brain. As I finish my drawing of this famous philosopher, there is a hint as to who she was. She was married to a man named Paul Trashland. Therefore, her name is, of course, Patricia Churchland. Now moving on to the second and final issue with functionalism. Earlier in the unit, we looked at the Knowledge Mary argument to disprove physicalism. Physicalists claim that phenomenal consciousness can be explained in terms of the physical, i.e. phenomenal consciousness can be reduced to the physical. However, a philosopher called Jackson challenged this with his Knowledge Mary argument. Jackson argued that certain mental states are irreducible to the physical. Jackson argues that the mental is irreducible, but nonetheless a product of the physical brain. I will now go on to display Jackson's argument in the form of a diagram. A brilliant neuroscientist Mary has been confined for her whole life to a black and white room and has access to the rest of the world only via a black and white TV. She has therefore never seen any colours. Despite this, she has studied the science of vision and come to know everything there is to know about what happens physically when someone sees and talks about colours. Thus, she knows all about the wavelength of light, the effects on the retina, and how this information is translated into certain excitations in the brain's visual system and how this leads to people saying things like I see red. Imagine one day Mary leaves the room and looks at the sky for the first time ever. Then she looks at a rose and then some grass and then she sees colours for the first time ever. Jackson argues that she learns something new, what it is like to experience colours otherwise known as qualia. Therefore her knowledge before she left the room was incomplete. Thus it would appear that physicalism leaves something out. It cannot explain qualia. It cannot explain the person or what it is like to experience something. Thus physicalism is not a complete account of reality. 
Now we can apply Jackson's argument to functionalism. For if Mary were to know all the physical facts, including all the functional facts, about what happens when humans experience colour, and yet she learns something new when she herself leaves the room and sees colour for the first time, then there is more to experiencing colour than is captured in the functionalist account. Thus functionalism is wrong. Functionalism can be defended. Jackson says that qualia provide us with a shortcut, i.e. a quicker and easier way by which we represent complex, functional and relational information. So if qualia are just quicker representations of functional states, then there is no reason why Mary wouldn't be able to deduce their nature from her complete knowledge of the physical facts. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you for watching.